Hi. Hello everyone, my name is Enrico Massoni and welcome to ST Microelectronics booth at this fantastic Mobile World Congress 2023. So ST Microelectronics is all over the mobile world. Yeah, we are a semiconductor company, but we propose you many applications and use cases. You can have a look at our demos and bots, they are brilliant and fantastic, introducing many novelties uh, this year, active in various segments and uh, parts. For an example, you have also the novelties about USB, USB communication, the 360 degrees contactless USB. Please welcome. Hi. Hello. So what are you showing here? So we are showing 360 degree rotation contactless USB. Uh, so if you can come close to the microphone when I feel like this, what are these little devices here? Yeah, um, just one second. Switch yeah. to the main. So, so what we are having here is the ST60 H3. Uh, this is an RF transceiver operating at 60 gigahertz. It uh, creates a point-to-point -point link uh, for USB 2 connection. Point-to-point. -point. Yeah, it's point-to-point. So it's point. kind of like host and slave at the same time. Yeah, something? kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, so up to 480 megabit per second. Point-to-point mm -hmm. -point connection, low power, like in the range of 100 milliwatts. Uh, here is a cool application. So here we have a USB 2 camera, which is connected to a one ST60 A3, one ST60 A3, and the uh, next ST60 A3 is located on the other side. So this is a standard PC with no USB driver uh, update whatsoever. And this one is connected here. It recognizes immediately the camera. And now I can rotate. Oops, I'm sorry. We can we can rotate, and we can see that the pitch that the video is transmitted, you know, and the latency is very is very low. It's a cable-like behavior, basically. Cable-like behavior. Yeah. Uh, so this is useful for many different things. Yeah, this is useful for many applications for some testing where you don't need to plug and unplug a USB connector, for example. It's also very useful for wearables, where now there are more and more wearables having a wireless charging, as my colleagues are demonstrating here. Also, they want people want to add data wireless connectivity to it. And this is a great product for this. Quite affordable USB connectivity, 400 megabit per second, low power. And what's happening there? So here, we are demonstrating a secure link. So typically, the PC will be uploading a secure firmware. So we can flash application B. And uh, data will be prepared. And the encrypted application is uploaded from the PC to the target through this link here. And you can see there is wireless connectivity here happening. Then the encrypted application is downloaded on the target. It is, uh, it is transferred, it is decrypted, and then a secure link is established. Nice. So you can configure in a secure manner your target. Uh, are you planning to do uh, five gigabit or even the higher USB yeah, spec? Yeah, we do. That's USB 2 is ST60 A3. Gigabit per second is ST60 A2, which we are typically using for some contactless Ethernet applications. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and continue with the IoT connectivity. I will bring you with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you can find the latest technologies about cellular IoT and GNSS. We have just launched the news byte last Thursday about the ST87M01, coming with the reliable and robust NB-IoT connectivity, NB2 release 15 of the 3GPP, combined with the GNSS and localization opportunity of the GNSS integrated inside the module, with the option of the ST Secure Element and also the SIM embedded, offering a very robust, compact and low power, um, low power features. 
Uh, it addresses several IoT application, uh, widespread IoT ranging from the smart cities with the smart lighting application to the smart metering domain, especially water meter and gas meter, battery power operated devices, but also EV meter and electric meter, ranging to the smart industry domain with predicting maintenance and other use cases and scenarios, and lending benefiting from the GNSS localization to the asset tracking solution and option. This solution can address various application options. It can come in the very simple flavor with the module itself, combined with sensor and actuators for very simple IoT application. And adding an external MCU, it can also address this medium to high complexity IoT scenario. Very, very new branded uh, devices. What is the GNSS? Yeah, the GNSS is a global navigation satellite system, so it can offer you, through the satellite data retrieval, the precise location with high accuracy and low power features because it is integrated inside the SOC. Is it an alternative to GPS? No, it is part of the GPS. It is a more combined and optimized solution because it adopts both Galileo and the GPS constellation to have a very accurate and precise localization. Galileo is the European one? Galileo is the European one and GPS is the US one, so it is a, a Western-based solution. Nice. Uh, and the NB-IoT is a new trend, it just works. Is that using cellular? Yeah, the NB-IoT is a very robust and uh, uh, secure uh, connection because it is based on the mobile network operator infrastructure. So it is uh, part of the 5G uh, family, the very new LTE family, very optimized in uh, power consumption feature. Yeah. Cool. And uh, we, we see here those little uh, parts. Is it in here? Yeah, this is the evaluation board, as you can see. Very simple and very effective evaluation board with Arduino pin connectors for developers. It is fully programmable and the engineers can like it very much and can use it a lot. And here on the, on the screen you show all the different connectors. Yeah, yeah, you, you can see the constituting part of the evaluation board. The module itself is in the center. Then you have the SMA connectors for antenna connectivity. Then you have the plastic holder for the SIM. Then you have the USB you can connect, uh, both powering and sending data to the UART connection to the module itself. And then you have the Arduino connection for the developers and software and firmware guys having the hands on this device. What kind of ARM uh, core? Yeah, this is an interesting platform because it comes with three separate cores. So you have the Cortex-M4, the, the DSP part, and then you have the security part with the RIS-5. So it is very, it is an IoT platform itself. So you're combining tri-cluster, you have two ARM and one RISC-V. Exactly, indeed. It is very interesting because uh, uh, you have a possibility to embed also simple customer application and so you can customize the device and uh, well address different use cases. Very nice. Is it ready for mass production? Yeah, it will land in mass production in Q3 this year, so uh, just be patient a, a little bit more and you will have the solution in your end. It, this could be one of the most popular RISC-V chips in the world. Yeah, this is uh, maybe the primary solution inside this domain to adopt this kind of, uh, of idea and novelty. So we are very proud of this uh, insertion of the, in the product option. Why did you need to use the RISC-V for the secure part? Yeah, it is an ancient feature for the security parts that nowadays also for geopolitical reasons and interest in the security, also for the Cyber Security Act of the European Union to be landed. It will be an IoT platform with security, additional security features landing in the European, US and worldwide application scenarios. So this could potentially be the new standard for uh, countrywide IoT. IoT. Exactly, indeed. We are, we are part of several groups also for the standardization in security, so we are driving the working group about this feature, and this will be the enabler, one of the first products to, to, to disclose this feature. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Can we check some of your colleagues yeah, around sure. here? Yeah, let's move around.
we will have another very hot topic like uh, uh, connected artificial intelligence. I, I will uh, introduce you to my colleague about the connected AGI. Please. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. So what are you showing here? So actually here we are showing uh, an example of the application that we can reach by embedding AI machine learning on the edge. So actually we, we are running... Can you come close to the microphone? Yeah, sure. So actually we are running... Actually we are running AI on the edge in order to um, reach like, best um, performances in a lot of applications to, to create a uh, new feature. For example, here we are showing how to create predictive maintenance solution by monitoring the vibration of a pump and allowing the user to take his solution, to put it on a, another system and to learn again the behavior of the equipment in order to fine tune the model. That's what we call on-device learning. So to do so, we have a tool called Nano AGI Studio that you can see on your, on your, on your right. This tool allows the user to create from scratch in a matter of minutes uh, AI algorithm for automated detection, classification, or regression, and uh, to, to cover every kind of use cases. We are sensor agnostic and only takes few steps to create an optimized uh, machine learning model. So you can see that the studio is doing most of the job to ease developer life, and we are reaching pretty huge performance, almost 100% accuracy, with a really low footprint. footprint. So these solutions are really optimized for STM32 microcontrollers and allows to create unlimited kind of uh, use cases. We are monitoring here vibration, but we can work with temperature, current, pressure, uh, audio, images, so the number of use cases is limited for that. Uh, this Nano Edge AI Studio, what is that about? Um, this is the tool that uh, will speed up the development process for AI solution. So it's optimized for microcontroller, for STM32 microcontroller, and allow every developers to create machine learning solution. Uh, I've got a comment here. Please ask uh, how to embed the application along with the OS. Is there any manual to set up? So actually, um, the embedding process is quite easy because the studio is generating a .h and a .a, so these uh, files can be implemented to the project, and it's just like calling a function. So the AI is here allowing it's a technique to reach best performances, to reach new features, to develop new feature. So you can just create a main in your project and call the function as you used to do. What are the skills required to program for this? Actually, uh, if you want to use Nano AGI Studio, you don't have to, to, to get advanced skill on AI or um, data science, because uh, the, tool, the tool does the job for you. If you come and watch, Actually, the tool will benchmark uh, thousands of combinations of machine learning model, uh, parameter, and, and, and um, preprocessing algorithm. So, it will define the best combination for your application. Here we can see for, for this demo that we are using three linear preprocessing bricks and one uh, mach classical machine learning model. So, the studio will tell you which um, model and which preprocessing you should use, but you, you have the, the, the right to change if you, if you want. So this is giving you all the tool, the, 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 yeah, the, all, all what that you need to develop your application. So you don't have to be to have any skills just to embed the library in your controllers. This is exciting. This is providing many new potential uh, uh, implementations. Exactly. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. ST is very active also in the imaging part, so let's have a look at these three other options. Uh, we have the current cabin imaging, demo pod, nice to introduce my colleague. Hello. Hello, Lutz Estermann, I'm technical marketing for our imaging automotive products. Uh, you're interested in automotive? Yeah, what do we, what do we see here? Uh, 
What is this? This is our device? EVK uh, together with the uh, illuminator here. So this application is for in-cabin monitoring and uh, uh, user experience features. This is a new innovative 5 megapixel sensor which is unique in the world because it, it is uh, capable of doing rolling shutter and global shutter mode at the same time. Or let's say like frame to frame, you can switch between HDR, RGB pictures and uh, NIR here with the illumination, you see the NIR, the near infrared, uh, 940 nanometers illumination. So that's 15 frames per second of each? Or how does uh, it do it? 15 frames, it is just a demo. The sensor can do up to um, uh, 60 FPS. Uh, in full 30? resolution. 30 each, for example, in full resolution, yes. How but, does it switch? Uh, it switched. Uh, uh, there is a firmware inside. There is a little controller in the sensor, which is switching then frame to frame. So we, we, you, you can uh, pre-configure the, um, the sensor yeah. in four different configurations. And then you can set a sequence and then and switch between the sequence, uh, between the contexts in the sequence. And you, you switch frame to frame. So you make one picture of in this mode and one picture in that mode. And then you stream the data out for to an ECU, and then they can do some, some kind of annotation like this. When you go here on this side, you can see that, that it recognizes my face, where I'm looking, if my eyes are open. And this is a safety application, you know, like the European Commission, there is this NCAP regulation that every car in 2025 has to have um, no, no, it's only working here on my side because it is configured, this is the driver side. So from 2025, every new car in Europe has to have a driver monitoring system. Wow, um, that's soon. That's soon, yes, yes. So, so we are very busy with the OEMs and with the tier ones to implement that in cars. Uh, we, are, we are on a good way to, to get the market lead also here with our, with our product. So we have two products. One is only focusing on this application with, uh, with uh, near infrared and then um, this product is a wide field of view for the whole in-cabin and then you can have all applications in the human and in the machine vision side. It's, uh, I like watching these uh, YouTube videos with the Uber drivers. They yeah. film themselves and they show what's happened, weird things happen, but this is like filming inside the car. Yes. In full color here. Yes, and HDR. Doing yes. The security. Exactly. So this is machine vision. Normally you don't see that. The, the machine is seeing that and then gives you information or sends the information. Um, maybe it makes beep, 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 beep. Or maybe it beeps, yes. So, but it, so for the DMS, it's only like the, the drowsiness and the inattention. Uh, on the driver, so you if can you when, when you have like phone. exactly when you when you there's another mode of this demo, but it's not enabled right now. So when you when you uh, have the handy uh, the mobile in your in your hand, it recognizes and then it would also like beep and say please don't call during driving. Right? Or don't play video games on the dashboard. <laughs> So in driving in your Tesla. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, no, here, uh, this is also the new trend in the automotive, you know, like the software-defined vehicle. Um, you bring more features, what you know from the smartphones, into the car. And uh, this is why you need human vision and uh, a nice, uh, nice HDR video content also to the, to, the, to the people in the car or to stream that, making Zoom calls or Teams. During the during the driving, I need this function where if I make a joke that's not very good with my my guests, they should just uh, park the car to the side of the road and say stop. Uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the beauty of the software-defined car. You can implement everything what you want. <laughs> because uh, the big problem is distraction. It's yeah. really a lot of accidents. Yes, exactly. So this is why why here, for example, this is the DMS <coughs> application again. So it knows where I'm looking. It, 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 it makes the eye tracking and then you can say ah now now I'm looking on the side uh, window now I'm looking on the on the um, on the video which is on in the in the center uh, uh, display uh, and now I'm focusing on the street so with this Changing sen with, 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 with this sensor uh, we are really uh, cutting edge and um, we can also do some processing on the sensor itself to, to make out of this. This is actually like a RGB NIR 4x4 color filter array, which is not normal for, for normal cameras. Normally you have only RGB. And the standard ISPs are not able to, 
to uh, deal the, with this. So you need to process this or pre-process this and uh, that uh, the standard ISP is uh, capable to, to use it. What we can do here with this sensor, we can do this pre-processing on the sensor and we're the only ones in the world which, which are capable of doing this. Nice. Yes. Alright, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Cool. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look also to the other solution like smart cameras and photonic sensor. Hi. Hi. So yes, here it's a global shooters camera. Uh, so we are my colleague with the um, with, uh, in-cabin uh, solution. It's a consumer industrial solution. Um, so we have a lot of type of application possible. Uh, like the first one, it's a face recognition. So for that we work with Trinamics. The mic. Oh, okay. Uh, we work with Trinamics uh, for, for in the partnership with Trinamics. Um, for the face recognition, so we provide the camera, they, uh, they provide the algorithm and the software solution. So we show today we are able to have a great level of securities uh, for mobile payment because we have a FIDO security certification for that. Uh, and, um, and we show uh, we are able to go under the screen with this camera. We go, we can go under the screen. That's uh, a main point for us to, to do that. Because we are a great sen sensitivity with our uh, cam uh, sensor camera in higher uh, wavelengths. And so this is kind of like a face unlock, face authentication, face authentication for payments. For payments, for screen, for, uh, for all you want. Yeah, for smartphone unlock, and so on. Some of these phones are using uh, kind of like LiDAR or something like that that recognizes the shape of your face and everything. Is that uh, required sometimes to have extra level of... Uh, For LiDAR, uh, you mean? So you cannot unlock it with a photo of the person? No, no, no. With, the, with our camera and the, the algorithm from Trinamics, uh, we are able to go the difference between a mask, so a real, real person, a mask, and the real person because they, they see the skin texture uh, sorry, skin texture and uh, and movement and skin movement so we, we can know that it is a real person or not this real person so that's the main point we does have it take a second or how long does it take to uh, to check that the person is moving and everything one or two seconds not, not 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 more not more yeah yeah yes. is this to be implemented inside the phones or yeah. inside what it's for it to be implemented inside the phone and that now available because we can go under the screen so we don't we anymore have the, a notch or a, a smaller point for the camera we can go under the, the screen for this uh, for this camera uh, what's the difference in quality for a selfie camera that's behind the screen compared to a little dot Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the main difference is we need uh, great sensitivities because uh, to go through the, the, uh, the LED or the screen, we, need, we don't have uh, a lot of transmittance. So we need to have a great sensitivity in IR on invisible. And we have that. Cool. Awesome. So this is available now, yeah. but not yet in the phone, or already in the phone? Not yet in the phone, but we've in the Trinami booth, if you have the time to go. Um, uh, we have uh, there are a demonstration with the same camera under the screen. Under the screen, there we can we can see that we can use it. That uh, that uh, that uh, functional things that available nice. in demonstration. And it, and it says a number of pixels, megapixels, and stuff it's like that. It's uh, one of uh, it's 1.5 megapixel uh, solution. Yeah, in global shutters. All right. So that will go behind the display. Yeah. And then you can have a different selfie lens also. You yep. can have one for selfie photos, another one just for authentication. Yeah, uh, for, for, for authentication we need to have uh, an higher, higher sources for sure. Uh, it's, uh, because we need to have uh, real abilities. So we need to, to we need to go when you are dark scene, we need to uh, have a face uh, face identification too. So we need uh, uh, infrared uh, infrared sources. That's the main point. So yes, uh, today uh, the main solution use it 
do uh, today we have the, the, the we have that on the phone we, we have the uh, uh, IR sources uh, on the on the phone yeah it's pretty nice that you can use your phone to pay contactless and you don't need to put a pin code or yeah. anything yeah it Just knows it's you yeah it knows you too exactly exactly it's, it's exactly the main point it's the main point yeah nice all right and uh, there's a uh, encryption and maybe Opti or something you use encryption on the on the chip that goes behind that yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 we can do we can go to this type of application yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. cool thanks a lot thank you thank you cool. and uh, then we continue the tour yeah yeah sure we can go back to the usb because we do have other technologies and interest on the usb topics yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, please introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, my name is Christian Beya. I'm a product marketing manager uh, for uh, um, power supply and uh, um, USB PD products. So nice. Uh, this uh, one. So, so what do we see here? Uh, we see here a 140 watt charger, which is very compact one. Uh, the first one in the world to be to get the, the USB PD 3.1 EPR certification for 28 volt uh, 5 amp outputs. This is really compact and lightweight. Um, so as you use the it is gallium used, nitride. Correct. It uses gallium nitride uh, um, transistor of latest generation and digital control. So. Uh, the, the combination of digital control and gallium nitride transistor allows the dimension to, to be very small and the magnetic components to, to be uh, very tiny and lightweight because uh, the system operates at high frequency, 300 kilohertz. As you can see, the efficiency of the system is above 94% and this is 2% higher than average chargers. Also, the dimensions are uh, uh, three times smaller than uh, um, a solution of the, of the same kind, but using a standard transistor. What do we see here on the table, those next limb? Those are, those are the transformers done sure by... Right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, those are done by our partner, LG Inotech, who had, uh, helped out uh, to create this uh, a prototype here which is in four-factor uh, solution uh, for USB PD charger. And uh, what's here? The EV loan, it what? shows what's inside a charger. That's correct. Inside the charger, this is the circuitry showing the ST1HP digital controller and the master gun gallium nitride half bridge power stage. Those are the, uh, the two main ingredients for this solution which is an active clamp of uh, flyback uh, um, converter and a PFC controller in front. So the, the total solution is made using ST components and LG Inotech magnetics uh, together with the Wurt electronic magnetics. So it's a total solution and uh, this is what inside this charger here. Nice, it's a lot of power, 140 watts. Yes, it's so. It's kind of amazing that yeah. uh, chargers can be so compact. Correct. And reliable, so. safe. That's correct. In yeah. fact, we, we got all the certification about compliance with USB standard, and it's also safe, as you said. Um, this 140 watt is enough to charge a laptop, a smartphone with a very fast charge. You can charge a, a smartphone in less than 20 minutes and uh, a laptop in less than 30 minutes. And you can also use it to charge uh, um, uh, an e-bike, for example, or a power tool like a drill, or even a vacuum cleaner, a portable vacuum cleaner. So it's a really universal charger. And uh, it said the world's first 600 volt. What, is that what it said on the screen up there? It's uh, uh, actually, uh, it's the, the world's first to, to get uh, uh, the USB PD 3.1 certification, and we were uh, also the world first to introduce the master gun solution, which is a 600 volt, 600 volt uh, uh, half bridge power stage using gallium nitride transistor of second generation. 
And this technology can be made available to every charger manufacturer in the world? That's correct. Right now? That's correct. Our technology is available for any manufacturer uh, to, uh, to use uh, our technology, to take advantage of uh, our technology and create products. And if you replace one billion chargers, you'll save 20 minutes, uh, you'll yeah. do a lot of savings. Yes, yes. So, uh, if we could replace uh, our charger, uh, any charger with our solution, we can save a uh, uh, million tons of uh, raw materials and energy, uh, energy saving uh, for uh, 3.5 billion uh, CO2, tons of CO2. So it's an uh, amazing amount of saving. So actually it would be a good idea, even though it sounds like a lot of uh, waste to change all the chargers in the world, but in terms of how much power you will save and efficiency, yeah. it's worth it. Correct. For the environment. That's correct. That's correct. And in fact, uh, the uh, USB-C is the uh, connector which is uh, uh, chosen by the EU to be uh, the one which replaces all the all the USB connectors. So nowadays, USB-C is the universal connector for all all the devices. And now the new USB standards are trying to make it clear how much bandwidth and how much uh, what uh, throughput power does, so it will be more clear what cable is supported, what charger is supported, that's and that's also very good, no? That, that's correct, that's correct. Uh, on the, on the uh, cable, you have the ability to know how much po uh, power you can, you can deliver, and uh, so uh, with 140 watt, you can really charge a, a large variety of products. I like my power bank, it's very interesting because you connect and it tells you how long it's left, how many hours, how many minutes, or maybe it would tell you how long it will finish charge. All this kind of information could also be in displays and stuff. Correct. But that's something else, right? Yeah, right. that's, that's really um, useful and convenient for the end user. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. We can end up our tour with the very last one pod in front of the, of the desk. Please, let me introduce you the self-learning IE sensor pod that we are presenting with the ISPU product. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. What do you show here? So here we are showing our new IMU, uh, which is an accelerometer and a gyroscope. And inside the same package, we also integrated a risk core where in this demo we are running unsupervised learning for fitness tracking. So we are able to learn some movements and then detect them. So, um, <laughs> what am I seeing here on the table? So on the table you can see the sensor, which is the small part right here. Then you can see the app where we can see what kind of, uh, what kind of exercise you are performing and how many repetition counts you have. And also, for the sensor, there we have an evaluation tool with the, with the wristband. And you say risk? What CPU is in there? It's completely one made by ST. ST? Yeah, so ST it's an ARM CPU? No, it's a completely, the architecture is made by ST. It's not an ARM. All right. And uh, so this is useful for, for what, what does it do? Self-learning. Yeah, so as I say, for fitness tracking, for example, but also you can run any other algorithms you like. We provide a tool chain for it, so you can program it in C language. You can run your custom C processing uh, algorithms, any of you like. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Hey. All right, thank you so much for passing by at ST and uh, we always welcome you for uh, new developments and new excitement and things uh, uh, to make life augmented, uh, as our motto is saying. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks for the thank tour. You. Yeah. And it's been a good show, right? A lot of people? Yeah, a lot of people passing by. We are, uh, we are um, uh, very enthusiastic of the people passing by, a lot of people, uh, a lot of interaction, customer, new possibilities, new technologies. Uh, it has been a great 2023 MWC show, yeah.